Hey, it's Ellie. Welcome back to another video. So today, I'm about six months late with this, but I'm about to finally start episode three of Winter Mute. So I'm really excited. I finally, finally got rid of the bear like two days ago, um, <laughs> which you should already be have seen by now. I think I can just resume my. There's an isolated community oh, in the northern yeah. part of Great Bear. Mm. Someone there is very sick. Great and Bear? There's nothing there anymore. Not since... I know. But I have to get there. I seem to recall... a town somewhere up north. Far, what was it called? That's it. Perseverance Mills. It was like sparks everywhere and then fire. She fought like hell to try and get him out. We tried to stop her, but she ended up on the bus. Somehow, she was small enough to crawl through the crushed part. Did you see the lights in the night sky, the aurora? Well, when that flared up, the radio came to life. Just lit up. Started spitting out noise, but it was all gibberish. Hello? Is this the radio station at Perseverance Mills? Is there a doctor with you? What's in the case? I have no idea. Don't worry, pilot. You'll be with her soon. Okay, I had to cut out that intro. Um, couple things. One, I totally realized I forgot my sleeping bag in the dam last time. Probably screwed from that. But I'm so excited to see Astrid's side of the story, so whatever, that's not gonna matter for a little while. <laughs> Where are we? Is this Astrid? Astrid? Now I'm confused. <laughs> So, she lives. Where am I? And she speaks. You're in my house. Found you out in the snow a few days ago. A, f a few days? Almost dead. You're half frozen and then feverish. Judging by those cuts, you've been dealing with more than just the bad weather. I... Uh... I ran into some trouble on the other side of that tunnel. By the looks of it, I'd say the trouble ran into you. Where am I? I told you. My house. You're still weak. Rest up and we'll talk more later. No, no. I'm, uh... I I'll be, I'll be okay. Suit yourself. And let's talk. You said we're in your house. 
But how did I get here? I was out hunting. Came across you in the snow, buried. You've been out there for hours, maybe even days. Nearly dead. Uh, well, um, thank you for finding me. Name is Molly. And don't thank me. <laughs> thank the crow. Crow? Yeah, crow. Or maybe a raven. The bird wouldn't shut up. Led me straight to you. Almost like it was guiding me. Hmm. Okay. So, uh, if she's been out here for maybe up to a couple days, are we, like, in the same time frame as when episode two left off? I'm wondering now. Uh, okay, I guess... You carried me here. Dragmore-like, but, yeah. You're pretty far gone. Wasn't sure you'd make it, to be honest. Well, all I remember is the tunnel. Wolves. Being chased and then wandering. Forever. Like the world with no end. Yeah. In the woods. In the dark. You can wander for days until you get so hopelessly lost. There's just no way to get back to where you were. I was in a small town. Other side of the mountains, Old Town. Bad shape since the collapse. Haven't been there in ages. You must have wandered a ways for me to find you where I did. But you're not from there. No. Old Town. Milton. Was fire and <laughs> whoa, it's okay. You're all right now. Don't get too worked up. You nearly died out there. That does funny things to people. Hmm. Kitchen. Am I hungry? Probably. I'm gonna ask about the power first. So, power's been out for a while. Yep. Think it'll come back. Well, we're used to the power going on and off out here in the Pleasant Valley, so we're usually prepared for it. Feels like you run this farm on generators for the better part of the year. Problem oh, is, the now the generators house. won't start. Or the cars. Yeah, we are, aren't we? Factor. TV's dead. Radio won't work. Basically, the only thing that works is the old landline and rotary phone. How is that possible? I guess because it's pre-electronics. The old party line from when this farm was originally put in, maybe 60, 70 years ago. I'm not exactly sure how or why it still works, but it does. Well, that's great. C can you call for help? Find out what's going on out there? There's mm. nobody to call. Yeah, who nobody still has a rotary phone? Nobody who'd help if you asked for it. Okay. Is this your kitchen? By the time I got you here, there was no way I was carrying you upstairs. So you set up a bed in here. Hours out. This is the warmest room in the house. This cook stove is probably keeping us alive. I was in a plane crash in the mountains. That's how I ended up in Milton. I, I got separated from, from a friend. They were in the crash too? Yes. They make it out alive? Well, there, there was a storm. Wolves. I, I got disoriented. We got separated. I, I couldn't, couldn't see him. Him? So you left him out there? And then I... Ran into trouble. Wolves and worse. I'm sure he made it out fine. Yeah? How are you so sure? Nothing could break that stubborn skull. 
thought you were worried about. Yes. Then there's something I need from the plane. What is it? Something important. I need to find him. I need to get it back. You haven't seen a man pass through here. Nobody that sounds like your guy. But you've seen a man. Like I said, nobody that sounds like your guy. Another of the convicts. Freezer's empty. You're gonna need yeah. energy to heal, which means we need meat. I'll be heading out early to hunt. Okay. You should stay here. Rest up some more. You don't look too good. Thank you. I will. And it's not safe out there, so just stay in the house. Right. Uh oh. I mean it. I have a bad Stay feeling. in the house. Is she not gonna come back? I don't think this is gonna end well. I feel like our savior is gonna die. Okay for ah, now. You're awake. Hooray. Thought you were resting. Managed to bag a stag not far from the farm. This will keep us fed for a bit. I heard a, a kettle whistling. I put it on for tea. So we can have tea and meat. I must be starting to feel better because that actually sounds good. It's amazing what hunger does to the mind. If you're feeling better. You can start answering some questions. Okay. Like, what the hell are you really doing out here? Oh. That's a long story. Well, power's been out for... I've lost track of how long. We got the cold, we got deadly blizzards, we got hungry wolves, we got some tea and meat. We aren't going anywhere. So to be honest, a bit of storytelling be a nice distraction right about now. Are we actually gonna find out? The real reason? I'm a doctor. Dr. Astrid Greenwood. Nice to meet you, Dr. Astrid. Like a head colds and babies doctor? More like lab coats and test tubes. A researcher. Oh, okay, so not the useful kind. I need to get <laughs> to a town up north. Perseverance Mills. You know where that is? I don't get out much, but yeah, I've heard of it. Okay. Well, there's some sick people there, and they need my help. And the thing I lost in the plane crash. The thing my friend might have. I need it if I'm gonna help those people. What is it? The thing the stubborn guy you left in the plane crash might have? Right. So what you're saying is the thing you need is on the other side of that collapsed tunnel in the mountains, in the place where you ran into trouble. That's right. Well, it's you know not what? anymore. You coming here? To Great Bear? Yeah. Not your best plan. Mm -hmm. So the people up north, in Perseverance Mills, why are they sick? I'm not entirely sure. That's why I need to get there. You must have some ideas, or why travel all this way? I have some ideas, yes. But you aren't going to tell me what they are. No. I'm not. Dang it. And the thing your friend in the plane crash has, the thing you need to help them? You aren't going to tell me what it is either, are you? Right. Well, you are a lady with a lot of secrets. <clears throat> so, when you came in, I heard you locking a padlock. Same thing when you went out. Am I locked in here? It's better for you to stay indoors. Why? Lots of wolves out there. And it's cold. You aren't strong enough to go out there yet. Trust me, it's for your own safety. 
I appreciate everything you've done to help. But I'd like to leave. I have to find my friend and get on with my work. When you're stronger. So, I'm trapped in here. Like I said, it's for your own good. So, um, is your husband around? Husband? It seems like more than one adult lives here. I assumed, uh, husband. Assumptions can be dangerous. You're a doctor, you should know that. I didn't mean to... Uh... You should just mind your own business. Oh, okay. But you just got back. I need space. I need to think. I'm sorry. I... <sighs> Stay out of my shit. Okay, maybe Just she's not gonna die. <laughs> maybe she's gonna be a villain. This place. Am I really trapped in here? For clues, I might tell you more about Molly. I'm really injured too. So. I feel like I shouldn't be doing this. Hmm. Okay, I can't search anything really, so what the heck? A broken rifle? Looks like maybe the barrel exploded. Hmm. Ah, interesting. Something good in here. No? Nothing? Who are these people in the pictures? Is that not a clue? I guess not. Hmm. I forgot about the basement when I went past there the first time. Ow. Oh, that's weird. That's the only thing that lights up. Just this table. than that. Here we go. A desk. No? One more clue. Where where do I miss this clue? Let's see. Oh here. I missed it right here. That looks like a Molly from a while ago. Hmm. Oh, phone! The phone is ringing! I can actually answer it this time. Uh, uh, hello? Thank God you answered. Molly? Yeah, it's me. Listen up, doctor. Okay. They have me surrounded. They're smart sons of bitches. Who has you surrounded? Are you in trouble? Wolves. Not who. What? It's those damn wolves. They've cornered me in the barn. Sounds like they're trying to find a way in. 
But, but wolves don't usually bother people. Don't bother people. Shit, lady, haven't you been paying attention? <laughs> Never mind that. Okay, okay, what can I do? I need you to bring me something from the house. Okay, but you locked me in here, remember? Flower vase, key to the basement's under it. Look for the gun locker, grab the rifle rounds, take the old revolver for protection. Might not stop a wolf, but it'll slow one down. Oh, boy. Follow the blizzard line from the house to the barn. Get here quick and we'll figure it out. Hurry! Okay, okay, I'm on my way. Go straight to the gun locker. Stay out of everything else, got it? All right, we're going on a mission. Our base, I think I saw here. Back. She's gonna know. She's gonna know that we looked at it. We gotta get the heck out of here. Is this the. Yeah. Might as well bring this along. For the wolves. Worse. Alright. Are we good to go now? insane. I guess I should have taken that water and that granola bar. <laughs> I feel like I'm not going to make it back to this house. I'm probably going to run away. I would run away if it were me, now that I have a revolver. I don't know if I could leave her there, because, like, she did save me, so... There are the lines to the barn. Jesus. This is gonna be really hard. These things, though, are nice. Molly, I was in your basement. Right. So? I, um, I found the body. Shit. Molly, who, who was it? Just, 
None of your business. I told you to stay out of my shit. Huh. You're a flyer for a town meeting of some kind. Looks like the town's not too far from here. If Mackenzie did pass through, he might have ended up there. All right, so we're just gonna... We're just leaving now, I guess. Shit, I can't pick that up. I don't need to take the arrow. We can um well we have that. I'm I'm we might as well just do that. I'm okay. Let's hope. What time that was. Alright. I've got two bullets left. <laughs> so let's just hurry up and get out of here. This Molly person is very strange. I don't know what to think of her at all. We're the one that wanted to go to the community hall in this weather, right now, in our weakened state. That makes me feel better about the wolves. I'm not gonna read that letter right now, it's too cold. I need to just go down to the community center. Is there another wolf up there? That is, isn't it? I think I could see it moving. Gosh darn it. This is so um, <laughs> tricky with the wolves here. And I'm already not doing too good. <laughs> For my injuries before. Oh no, I think it's a D. Oh, a wolf is after the deer. Oh, he got it, I think. He did. He got it. Oh, he's going after another? Or is there just another wolf? just like three or four wolves over there. Alright, we're gonna stay on the road. Hopefully they can get us from here. Holy crap, we are going slow. Come on, lady, pick up the pace. Well, anyway, I was gonna say before, um, after I watched the recap of the cinematic, I noticed a couple things that weren't in episode two because I just played that um, the dialogue for the radio is different. 
and I only understood it on the recap on when I was editing my video back I understood that they were asking for doctors or medical assistance but at the time I didn't catch what they said and um, Mackenzie thinks that they're saying Astrid is there but clearly she's not There's smoke coming from something. I think that's supposed to be smoke. Yeah, I left my sleeping bag in the dam, so that's gonna be fun when I go back to Mackenzie. I'm not gonna have a sleeping bag anymore. Hopefully we meet up or something and we can share a sleeping bag. Um, but the other thing was that I couldn't really tell did Mackenzie actually get hit with that axe? Because if he did, like, how, how do we survive that? <laughs> Looks really cool, the plumes of smoke. Kind of static, but still cool. Mining town. Okay, we've made it. That's got to be the community hall. The raven or the crow. Hmm. Is it following us? Knows the raven is our our Methuselah, I guess. <laughs> ah, holy crap! A bunch of people that are actually alive. Whoa! Oh, hello. Did you come from the crash site like the others? All the cots are taken, but you can sit by the fire, warm up a bit. Crash site? How did you know about the- The crash site. Don't you remember? Another one suffering from shock, maybe. Mm. I crashed, but days ago, I'm far from here. No, no. You crashed yesterday. In the hills. A terrible crashing sound. I even heard it over the howling blizzard. Don't you remember? Listen, I, I'm sorry. You must be mistaken. I crashed, but not here. Oh, of course. Well, please stay and warm yourself by the fire until we can figure out where you belong. So, these people are all survivors of a crash? Well, most of them, yes. There were maybe half a dozen people in and around the town site when the blizzard first hit. Over the past day or so, the rest have slowly arrived. Most of them from the crash site. What crash? What crashed? Oh, okay. <laughs> a passenger airliner, best I can tell. Most of the people who arrived were too weak to talk about it. But judging by the thundering sound and the size of the fire on the hills, Whatever crashed up there, it must have been something big. Are you sure you don't remember the crash? What is this place? This is the old community hall in Thompson's Crossing. We gathered people here when the weather started turning bad. Three, or was it four days ago? The houses became too cold. And it seemed better to bring everyone under one roof. Then yesterday, the crash survivors started showing up. How long do you think this weather will last? You're not from around here, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Whoever named this area Pleasant Valley had a pretty good sense of humor. We get some of the harshest weather on all of Great Bear. But, I mean, it's worse than usual? 
Yes. Another storm blew through about a few weeks ago. The worst I've seen in years. Blocked the roads, in and out. I'm afraid we're stuck here until the road's clear. Will someone come to check on the town? Clear the roads so you can get out? I don't think so. <laughs> Not anymore. We'll have to wait for nature to take its course. Yikes. But what will happen to all these people? Honestly, I'm not sure. We're down to our last food. We can melt snow for water, but that will only get us so far. And this time of year, there's always another blizzard around the corner. Things might be different if the power hadn't gone out. The best thing we can do is try to keep these people warm and fed, and then we'll see what the Lord has in store. You seem disoriented, but you're in much better shape than the others. Maybe you can help us. I'm a doctor. I can have a look at the survivors and uh, see how to help them. That sounds like a good place to start. Once you've had a chance to check on them, come back. And we can try to figure out what can be done for them. Hmm. Okay. Wow, I can't. There's so many people here. It's crazy. Alright, let's just start over here, I guess. Easy. Just gonna see if I can help. Oh. This guy is diabetic. Oh dear. She's at 73%. 56, 81. Can I not have this person? One of these. Winston, we can help. And um, okay. check you over. a concussion. These people aren't all too bad. Most of them are going to be okay except that diabetic. This might be serious. Concussion. I'll just wait it out a little bit. Let me have a look, okay? This one's dehydrated. Nobody gave him some water? Oh, I'm finally healed. Hmm. I'll see if I can help. Hypothermia. Let me have a look, okay? Feeling better now? There. Okay. I just had to solve that one myself. I guess. I've had a look at the survivors. The rest of them Most just need time. Really good condition given the circumstances. Except that diabetic. These were the lucky ones. You'll find the ones who are less fortunate in the basement. May God take mercy on their souls. They died from their injuries, or were found dead. We put them downstairs to keep the bodies cold. And also, well, there are wolves around, you see. Yes, I'm yes. familiar with the wolves. <laughs> I think I can find most of what these survivors need. 
But there is a diabetic in the group. They're gonna need insulin and soon. Do you know where I might find some? That's bad news. No, I don't. This survivor has type 1 diabetes. That means their body can't produce insulin. If they don't get it, they'll eventually go into shock and probably die. Well, then we need to find some. And soon, before the blizzard becomes too powerful to even risk going outside. I need to remain with the survivors, minister to them. But you, you can go and look for the medicine they need. I will. Any suggestions you have would be very useful. Most of the surrounding houses will be empty, but you may find some of the minor supplies you need to treat the survivors. The diabetic came in from the plane crash a day, maybe two days ago. So your best chance to find their insulin will probably be to find their luggage at the crash site. How will I know which luggage is theirs? You'll have to search everything you find and hope for the best. Okay. You keep an eye on everyone and I'll be back as soon as I can. Thank you for your help. One more thing. Yes? Many of these survivors are in bad shape. From the crash, it's true. But I've seen this sort of thing before. People need hope to survive. And if they can't have hope, they need some closure. People here, many of them weren't traveling alone. They're broken hearted, worried sick about their loved ones, feeling guilty. Why did they survive when others didn't? You can help them find some closure. But chances are searching the crash site won't be a pleasant experience. I've seen death before. Yes, you're a doctor, so you understand the fragility of human life. The fragility of the human spirit is more my domain. For the ones who've lost loved ones, if you can bring them some closure, that will help to start their healing process. Yes. It's well known that the mind and body are inextricably linked. If you encounter any artifacts, any information that would help to identify those who did not survive the crash, that information might be a salve to these poor broken souls. Then perhaps they'll have a chance to face tomorrow. I'll do what I can to find All the right. IDs documents, anything that can help identify the people who didn't make it. In turn, take this, my child. Oh, um, I'm, I'm not religious. Please, keep it. It's not for you. Please, humor me. I, I don't understand. At least until I can minister to those souls myself. Having you carry this rosary while you investigate the crash site it would bring an old priest some comfort. It will be the closest thing to my being able to pray for them. Um, I mean, no disrespect, Father, but do you really believe this will help? Yeah. <laughs> Perhaps in the end, faith is all we have. Okay. I've got limited weight here, Pastor, though, so... It's a good thing your rosary doesn't weigh a lot. Where's the phone? Oh, here. So, you're still alive? So far, yeah. But there are people in town who won't be if I don't get going. You heading up to the plane crash? How'd you know that? You risked your life to come here to help some sick people. You came to help me when I was stuck in the barn. You're a doctor. You're not gonna leave a bunch of crash survivors to die in the cold. I would like to help the crash victims, yes. Hope you're wrong. Yeah, well, I left you a little present. Look, I'm not sure. Relax. You have to trust someone, right? Would you trust someone with a dead body in their basement? 
spare point. But if you want to live, check out the trunk of that blue sedan over by the swing set. Well, okay. Thanks, I guess. Watch out for those wolves. Molly, what a strange NPC she is. Truly strange. Okay, well, I think I'm going to call it for this episode and start again fresh another day. We'll go search the town, look for the medicine, look for the insulin for the diabetic so that he makes it through. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to give it a like and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my future content for the long dark. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Until then, bye!